Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this IUZ 20X optical zoom conference room camera. I'll also be taking a look at this IUZ pan tilt zoom camera controller. So these were provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. Well, let's get the camera out first. So this is 1080p HD, 60 FPS, Sony sensor. This has USB 3.0 and HDMI out. It supports RS-232 and RS-485. And it says universal compatibility. So let's get this open. Here we have a user manual. Let's take a quick look at it. So this talks about the different parts. So the camera will pan and tilt, and then it also has that 20X optical zoom. These are the different interfaces. So we have 12 volt power, the RS-485, RS-232, IR receiver, USB, and HDMI. These are the parts that come with it. We have the camera, power supply, wall mount, mounting screws, user manual, remote, and USB cable. And here are the specs. So if you want to see these in detail, you can pause and read through them. So this does show different cameras here. We're looking at the 1080p 20x zoom, and here's the remote. This says when operating the remote control, press the menu button to enter the main menu of the video camera. So I'll show this when we take a look at the camera, but there's lots of configurability here. So this goes through those different menus. Here we have common operating instructions. So it looks like the remote can control multiple cameras. Looks like up to four. Then we have camera direction control. So if you want to move the camera a little bit, you just press the button. If you want to move it quickly, you can hold down the button. And here we have focus. We have auto manual far and near. We have two zoom modes. We have fast and slow. Here we have preset setup. So it says press preset, then press one of the numbers zero to nine and reserve a preset that corresponds to that number. You can set up 10 presets on the remote control. And then to pull up the preset, you press the number and it will go to the preset. To remove the preset, you press reset and then the number. So what these presets are is that you can aim the camera at something, assign it to a preset, aim the camera at something else and sign a second preset and so on. And then you can press the button to go between those. So say you're using this in a conference room with multiple people or even like a podcast, if someone is talking, you can press the number that corresponds to them. And then if someone else talks, you can press the other number and the camera will move over to that second person and so on. Here we have the RS-232 and the RS-485 interface. This talks about installation instructions. So you want this to be tilted no more than 15 degrees. And there's troubleshooting, maintenance, warranty card. So let's get this out. Let's see, it looks like there's boxes on the side. These would be the accessories probably with the camera in the middle. So I think that's everything there. There's the camera. Has some packing material here. Let's pull that out. So it looks like it comes with a rubber lens cover. So when you're not using it, you can keep that lens clean. On the bottom, we have a quarter 20 tripod mount. We have some nice thick rubber feet. Looks like some venting. On the front, we have power and standby lights. On the back, we have all of those ports. Let's take a look at these boxes here. We have the remote control. It takes two AAA batteries. So I'll put some in now. Here we have USB cable. Let me measure that. It seems to be around nine and a half feet long or so. Okay, so the second box has the power supply. Output on this is 12 volts at two amps or 24 watts. And cord length on this is around five foot for the brick and the power cord will plug into it and that's around four foot. So it's about nine foot for the whole thing. We also have a mounting bracket in here. So this would go on the bottom. There's a little indexing pin that would go in here and then the quarter 20 would thread in here. And that would be this little quarter 20 screw. So if you have a conference room or a studio, you could mount this on a wall so it's out of the way. So let's get this off of here. So let's get this connected up. So I'll plug into power. And this shouldn't need a computer. It does have HDMI on it. So I'll plug that into my monitor here. Okay, when I turned it on, it, it was out of focus and it seemed to know that and it auto focused. So let me aim this. So if I just tap it, it moves a tiny bit. And then if I hold down, it moves a little bit faster. Let me turn off my light. Let's show the monitor here. So let's try some of these features. So in the middle of the screen here, I have a smart outlet. Let me zoom in on it. So this has 20X zoom, so it's very sharp there. Now it can take a little while to get it all framed in. So what you can then do is press preset one. So I'll press preset one. And now if I move away, 
and hit 1, it will go back to that point. So I'll zoom out a little bit. I'll go to the right, and here we have my echo dot. So I'll zoom in on it. So here I have the echo dot. I'll hit preset 2. And now if I want to go back to the smart outlet, I'll just press 1. It moves over there. If I want to go back to the echo dot, I'll press 2. Of course, I can have this point at me, so I'll do that next. Now I was moving the camera to the left, but it reached the limit, so I need to swing it around to the right. Okay, so here's my face. Let me zoom out and frame it. Now I'll hit preset three. So I want to look at the smart outlet. I'll press one. The echo dot will press two. Myself will press three. There we go. There's also a home position. But the switch is very quickly. So if you're in a conference room and different people are talking, you hit that button, it'll quickly switch between the different people. Now I'm just showing this here on a monitor using the HDMI out. Of course, this conference camera can also be hooked into a computer. It will show up as a web camera. So I'll move that over. Of course, that just messed up all my presets. I'll plug in the USB cable. So here I have my MacBook Pro. Now this is a 2015 MacBook Pro, it's older, but it should have no problem working with this because this camera will show up as a webcam to the computer. So I'll plug that in the USB port. I'm going to open up QuickTime Player. Now this would work with OBS, Zoom, Skype, and any other software that uses webcams. So this is the webcam on the computer now. Next to the record button, there's a little arrow. It's probably hard to see on here, but I'll click on that and I'll go to UVC camera. And now we have the web camera here. Let's see if I can show both at the same time. Now I'm guessing there might be a little latency on the webcam over the HDMI, but we'll find out. So I'll go to preset one, or we're at preset one, I'll go to preset two. Of course, I can adjust this now that I messed it up. And I'll resave it, go back to preset one. Let's fix it also. Then we'll go to three. So let's see if there's any latency here. So there seems to be a, just a tiny bit of latency in the HDMI and maybe a little bit more in the webcam. So we can also do things like mirror or freeze the image. We can go up, down to flip it. So you can do a lot of controlling with remote control. Now this also has a menu system on it. Train this on the monitor. Actually, I'll just record this. So menus right here. So here we can see it says exposure, color, image, PTZ, communication, information, restore default language. So I can hit the middle button, it has a home icon on it on exposure. So for instance, on this one, it says flicker, 50 hertz, so I'll press down. I'll press to the right, we'll change that to 60 hertz, and then I'll go to return. Then we have color, so we have brightness, contrast, etc. We have image, so we have flip mirror, video format, let's check that out. So this has 720p and 1080p, and then you have 25, 30, 50, and 60 FPS for each of those resolutions. Then we have menu mirror, USB mode. Yeah, whatever I did there, <laughs> I shouldn't have done. Let me get that back. So it said bulk and now it changed to ISOC. Okay, so I had to get connected back up. We'll go to PTZ. This is the acceleration curve. So we have fast, slow, and middle. So I'm going to set that to fast. Then we have left, right set. So I think that determines which way is left or right. So I'll leave that off. Next we have communications. So these are the different protocols. Information, this firmware version, and restore default. So those are the different menu items. So if you don't have this hooked up to a monitor, if you're using this with Skype or something else, on your little preview window, you can see that menu. Now you'll probably want to expand it so you can read it. It's nice that they put these features on a menu on the camera because that allows it to be compatible with everything. You don't have to have special software on your computer to operate it. You can operate it from the remote control and you can do the settings on the camera. So this will work with a very old computer as long as it supports a 1080p webcam. So let's set the computer aside for now and let's check out the controller. So here we have a manual, we have a power supply. This is 12 volts at two amps, or 24 watts. Cord length is around five feet. And here we have the keyboard. Let me get the box out of the way. 
And I think that's everything. Let me pull the manual out. So here we have a manual and we have a compliance warranty card thing. So here we have a product description. So this talks about the different protocols it supports. You can pause and read through those. And this talks about the features. It supports two control modes, network mode and analog mode, and have independent IP address in the network mode. It supports software control of conference cameras. It has a variable speed 4D joystick. This can adjust focus. It supports up to 256 cameras, and you can power it with power over ethernet. And here are some different specs here. So this has USB for upgrading the joystick, ethernet for network connection and power, and then we have serial ports. This talks about how to connect it. It says connect the camera and the joystick controller in the same LAN and ensure their IP address is in the same network segment. So that's for IP control. This talks about RS-485 connection. So there's a daisy chain or a home run connection. And this talks about RS-232 connection. And here's a description of the buttons. So we'll take a look at that on the interface. Although I'll hold this here so you can pause and read through those if you'd like. And here it says joystick control setting with description. We have more on the back. This talks about adding an analog device, web setup, installation and setup, network configuration. So here's the keyboard controller itself. It has a little screen. We'll peel that plastic off. So let's take a look at this itself. So this feels very sturdy. Actually, I think this is metal here. It feels very heavy. On the bottom, we have rubber feet. On the back, we have ports. So we have the RS-232, RS-422, Ethernet, USB 12 volt, and power. Now for the control, we have a joystick over here. So we can go 360 degrees. We can turn left for wide, right for telephoto. There's a button in the middle. Here we have zoom over here also. In the upper left, we have pan tilt speed, zoom speed. This is red blue gain. This is iris shutter gain, auto white balance, auto white balance cycle, bright plus or minus auto exposure, exposure cycle. We have cam one through six here. It says cam ID here. We have menu, menu back, menu enter. We have near far, backlight on, off, home, setup, preset, call, autofocus. And then we have a numeric keypad here with escape and enter on it. So here are the buttons, you can see the travel on it. So let's plug it in, we'll turn it on. So it beeped and here the screen came up, it says initializing. It says setup failed. So it was looking for an IP address. I don't have it plugged into the network right now, but I'm going to get this set up. Then I'll come back and talk about what it took to get it set up and we'll check it out. Okay, so I got this set up, and the cable I'm using is a serial cable. It's a mini DIN to female DB9. So the round one will go into the camera, and the other one will go into the controller here. So if I move this now, you'll see the camera is not moving. So what I'm going to do is hold on to this button, and it says long press to enable analog. So I did that, now it is in analog mode, and now we can move around with this. We can also zoom with it. You could probably see the lens moving there. And we can go to our presets. So I can go to one, two, three, and I've added a fourth one. Let me try and show all of these in the same frame. So you can see we have the camera here. I'll tilt it to, let me zoom out. I'll tilt to the left. Let's tilt down. This is a reflection of me, but this is a computer case. You can zoom in. You may have trouble focusing there. I can try to manually focus. So I just hit far. Let me try near. Doesn't quite want to focus on that. It's a little too close. So we can do diagonal scrolling also. We can go down. And here we can set presets. So let's go into this power adapter here. See if I can manually focus this. So that's focused. So let's set preset five, enter. So now I'll go to preset one. And this has moved since I did that, but let's go to preset five now. So something to point out here, and it may not show up on the camera, but when I went to preset five, I did manually focus that, and I'll need to focus it again. It doesn't store the focus level in the preset. So the autofocus is pretty good. There's a wire getting in the way here, so it's messing up the autofocus. So let's move that wire 
and I'll hit autofocus and now we'll be autofocus. So now I can go between presets. And since we don't have that wire in the way, it will automatically focus. So on the controller, we also have widen telephoto here. And that is remembered by the preset. So if I hit preset five again, it will zoom back out. So this keyboard controller can work with a number of different systems. It can work with IP cameras. So there'll be features that are supported by certain cameras and not others. So say you're using this in a church and you have the pastor that is speaking and then maybe you have a band off to the side or a singer. So you could assign different positions to these numbers. So you could say the pastor speaking and then maybe lectern two, lectern three, and then maybe this is the band or the singers or choir and maybe five is a wide shot of the front of the church. Of course, you could do a similar thing in a conference room. You could have numbers for each seated position. This could also work well for like a city council. Maybe you have seven people on the council and you have them numbered one through seven. So if someone is talking, you can press that button and it will zoom in on them. Now, one thing I do want to point out is this does not have audio in the solution. So if you're using this in a conference room, for instance, you want a conference room microphone if you're using this in say like a church, you'd probably hook up to the PA system to grab audio, but this is made as more of a professional solution and that's why you have audio separate. It wouldn't make sense to put a microphone in the camera because the camera may not be where the people are talking. And if you want good audio, you really need the microphone near the people. So that's the IUZ 20X Zoom 1080p conference camera and the IUZ keyboard controller. These two pieces can almost make up like a little TV studio. I like that this has HDMI out. You can hook this up to a monitor so you can see exactly what the camera is taking in. And then you can have that USB out going into a computer where it's recording it or streaming it. So it does have this nice remote to control the camera, but if you wanna take that up a level, then you can get this keyboard here. And I think if you're doing like a long conference or something, I think this would be more comfortable to use. Of course, I only touched on a little bit of what this can do. This has many interfaces on it. It has the IP control, so you could control IP cameras and things. But if you're going to hook it up to this conference camera, one way to hook it up is with this serial cable. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.